right, there we go. There we go. We'll share our screen. We'll share our screen second instead of first. And I got something great for y'all that are joining us on Impacting Life 24-7. And uh, this is a treat. It's so good that I'm not even doing the intro. I'm going to let him make his own intro. Check this out. Get up on your feet, put your hands together, and show some love for our next speaker, Daryl Thomas! I'm built. Works for this. My life is amazing, and it's only getting better. A candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. My name is Daryl Wayne Thomas Jr., affectionately known as Coach D. I'm a husband, a father to five, a U.S. Marine, at-risk interventionist, and I'm a motivational speaker. Listen, when, when you actually are intentional with, with your actions, when you're intentional with your mindset, when you're intentional with your words, I promise you, you will win. So you watch your words. You're intentional with the actions and making sure they align with your words. That's your eye. Intentional. A lot of times we talk and talk, but we don't walk it. There's a void in leadership, and that's why I focus so much on building leaders to help have enough confidence in themselves to go out there and live to their greatest potential so they can turn around and light other people's candles. I understand it might be hard. I understand you question whether or not you're built for it, but I'm telling you that you are built for it, and perception is everything. So I speak to high schools, colleges, universities, and even sports teams. They bring me in oftentimes because they don't just want someone that's going to talk the talk. They want someone that's actually walking that out and that's leading by example. Having a student speaker come and speak to my students, students have no idea who this person is, speak for about 10 to 12 minutes, and have that level of an impact to where the students are inspired to purchase a book, uh, try to stay after to engage more and have more discussion and listen more to Dora Thomas um, was very powerful. I, I hadn't seen that before. I hadn't been able to see any guest speaker uh, come to the campus and inspire the students the way, that Tom, the way that Dora Thomas did. I truly am a firm believer that you are a difference maker, period. As I said before, all of us are in the, in the business of helping kids. So our purpose is to help them, but let me be a little bit more clear. Our purpose is to ice the kids. I, to inspire. C, to challenge. E, to empower. Do not quit. You got somebody that you're meant to influence. And as a leader, that's your assignment. That's your assignment. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to welcome you to Impacting Life 24-7 with your host, C.L. King, and my good friend, the one and only, the gentleman that you got to hear uh, and see uh, with that video reel, my friend all the way from Waco, Texas, the one and only, the incomparable Daryl W. Thomas. Welcome, Daryl. <laughs> What's going on, C.L.? Thank you, man. It's definitely a pleasure to be here, brother. Semper Fi. Yes, sir. Semper Fi. And uh, I was like, I, we were talking in the pre-show, uh, you know, we tried to get this together in the beginning of the year and God knew the right time for us to get together. And the time is now. And I believe that especially given the, the climate that we're in, and I don't mean anything superstitious by that. I mean, like kids are getting ready. They're going back to school. There's a whole new fresh set of opportunities and who better to help us get aligned than coach D in the house. So coach D, how can people contact you, brother? That's the first thing we want to ask you tonight. Where can people reach you? I mean, a simple thing I'm on, I'm on all social media platforms. The number one, Daryl D A R R Y L W Thomas T H O M A S. You can, you can reach me there, like I say, all platforms. And also go to the website, DarylWThomas.com. But Darryl, yes, sir. I love that, DarylWThomas.com, out there in the heated part of the country, God's country still, there mm -hmm. in Waco, Texas. And uh, Daryl and I, we talked to him and Greg and I, we talked earlier in the year. And Greg's, uh, I mean, uh, Daryl's very, very busy. 
I'm very busy and our schedules just didn't align. But I said, you know, and, and I love that we didn't get offended with one another. We just said, hey, we'll circle back. And when things get right, that's what Marines do, man. They overcome and adapt. So, Daryl, give us a little bit of background about who you are, brother, and uh, tell us a little bit of your story, man. Man, you know what? I, I like to I like to hang my hat on being a, a family man. Um, for for those that know a little bit about me, you understand that my wife and my five kids, man, that's that's like that that's that's the wind beneath my wings, if you will. My heart beats. Um, that's the reason why I do what I do. Coming from an environment that I came up in, uh, family was dysfunctional, family was broken, uh, family was was almost obsolete, if you will, in terms of the essence of what family is supposed to be. And so to have the family that I have, man, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. And so, yeah, I'm definitely a family man. Uh, as you had mentioned, U.S. Marine uh, leadership coach. I actually go around the country and even across seas, you know, just helping to develop, develop leadership you know, within organizations, within schools and things of that nature. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's really who I am and what I do. Well, that's awesome, man. And, you know, Daryl, one of the things that, that I love that you, that you recognize is I tell, I told someone this not too long ago, man, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything, but if you don't have your family, you don't have anything either, bro. You know what I mean? And, and sometimes you and I, especially in this industry, we can be made to feel like we something, we the cat's meow, our name's on the marquee. But it's really our family that that knows the true us, that lives with us every day. And we, you did, man, God is going to honor you for honoring them. I, I do see you got five kids, two more, brother, and you'll catch me. I think you, you're young enough to still do it, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> you got that one, CL. You got that one. Like, no, we five, I, was in, I told I told my wife initially because we're high school sweethearts, man. About 25 years ago, CL, I said to my girlfriend, I said I want a wife and seven kids, and she looked at me. She did that little side eye. Uh, She's like, "By who?" I said, "By <laughs> you, boo. By you." And she was like, "Whatever." But she gave me five, and like I said, we're, we're good with the five. CL. Hey, well, praise God on that front, man. Yeah, I know somebody told us. Back when we were having kids, they said, uh, "Yeah, y'all should have had a y'all should have got a TV early on, <laughs> y'all <marriage." laughs> So anyway, Daryl, one one of the things that that I know that you specialize in is is you you deal with young people in leadership, college, high school, you know, all throughout the country and around the world. But why is why is injecting leadership uh, to this next generation so important to you, brother? You know what, I, I discovered at an early age in life, CL, that, that inside of every leader is a solution to a problem. And for me, when I look at our world, I look at the condition that our world is in, a lot of people, are, they're, they're trying to find solutions. They're, they're reaching and grabbing for, for, for potential solutions. And I'm saying we don't need more solutions. We just need more leaders. So if we can begin to teach and to instill leadership into our young people, especially, man, we can feel a whole lot better about passing that baton to them when it's their time to take the reins and to lead our country, to lead our world. And so for me, a lot of our people are hurting simply because they haven't tapped into that leader that's in them. The answer is in you. You are the answer. You are the solution. You just got to tap into it. And so that's that's me. That's, that's where I stand. I love it, man. And, and again, you guys are l- tuning in live. And of course, those of you that will download the podcast later, you can connect with our guest, Daryl W. Thomas dot com. You can find him all over social media. And you, of course, will get his contact information in the show notes. But but Daryl, life wasn't always, you know, they see you on stage that you got four books that we're going to talk about. You are, you, uh, you know, spoken in some amazing major corporations and corporate events and, and, and the, the reviews that you got were absolutely phenomenal. That one from the principal, I, I said, I want many times when I bring people on here and I, mm-hmm. they, they want to share their book with me. Right. So then I'll go and I want to see what people have said about their book. Right. Mm-hmm. And th- there's nothing like a testimonial. 
So, you know, when that principal was saying, hey, look, I've, I haven't been able to see a speaker come to the school and captivate my students like Daryl did, that, that man, that's, that's almost better than the check. You know what I'm saying? It, it's a close second, but it's almost. Close second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We still need to check, ladies and gentlemen. Five kids. But, but right, exactly. Hello, y'all. Hello. If he's got five, I got yeah. seven, and seven right. grandkids. Come on, help the, bro- help the speakers out out here. But, yeah. but Daryl, it wasn't always like this, bro. Yes, it sir. It wasn't always like this. And if you don't mind, I, I'd love for you to kind of just peel back just a little bit of, of your life story relative to the adversity that you experienced. Because I, I think there will be people in our broad audience, man, that, that need to hear. They always keep hearing me beat the, the drum. No matter the adversity, you still can make. But I, I want them to hear it from you know, the, the Midwest, I want them to hear it from Daryl Thomas. Tell us about, you know, some of the adversity that you had to overcome, bro. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, CL, for me, I came from a broken, a broken home, you know, to where there was a lot of dysfunction. Mom and dad, they separated, you know, when I was four years old, um, I experienced the, the sexual trauma, you know, being, uh, violated by, by a family member, you know, just poverty, you name it. I've seen these things. I've seen my dad uh, not have that emotional intelligence and he would he would go from zero to 100 just like that and losing his temper and he would abuse women. I would see my mom, you know, not being able to handle the, the stresses in life and she'll start to abuse drugs. And so what's been two weeks over to dad, seeing him do his thing and two weeks over to moms, seeing her, you know what I mean? A lot of times MIA, you know, during that, during that period of my life. Well, this particular time over at my dad's and um, my dad has a girlfriend that lives with him. He took out his paycheck, just got it from work. And he told her, he said, hey, woman, listen, take this check and go put it in the bank and get some food in the house. The kids need something to eat. And he took me and my brother. We left that morning, came back to the apartment later that day. First thing I'm looking for CL is for food. I go to the fridge, no food. I go to the cabinets, we got the same snacks as that were in there before. And so I immediately looked to my dad and I, and I knew some. I knew about my dad, what I just explained to you that just like clockwork, he's about to explode. And it was three, two, one, boom. Woman, didn't I tell you to get some food in the house, you bleepity? I'm talking about he's going off on her. And the craziness is she's so thrilled that she was like, man, I know you didn't. I'm about to show you what I can do. And so she goes from zero to 100, just like that. Heated argument, mid-argument. My dad says, DJ Daryl Jr. and Quincy, my little brother, y'all go downstairs by the car, wait for me. We're getting ready to leave for good. I was like, all right. But I was like, dad, like, like not ever coming back for good? He was like, yeah, boy, like, go. I was like, all right, bet. So I go downstairs, and as I'm going downstairs, I can hear the commotion pick back up, but this time things are being thrown across the room. Things are hitting the walls, things are hitting the floors. By the time we make it down to the car and I'm I'm standing looking at the front door, I can hear bodies being shoved into the wall now. And every time the body hits the wall, you can see the front window of the apartment begin to rattle. Boom, it's rattling, boom, it's rattling. Look at my little brother. I see that he's starting to freak out and say, hey, Q, you all right? Because Quincy, again, is his name. I said, Q, you all right? He said, yeah, I'm good. But I could see the terror in his eyes. So I tucked him in a little bit closer to me. I said, hey, Q, it's going to be all right, man. Just stay right here. I got you. All the commotion stops, CL. Front door of the apartment, it swings wide open and you hear, boom. And then it closes. Opens again, boom. Closes. Does it a few more times. Now I'm starting to freak out. And long story short, somebody comes out to the front porch. They're bragging. And they're boasting. That'll teach you to mess with me, you. And they broadcast to the whole world what they just did. I throw my backpack down, run up the stairs, look behind the door. And that's when I saw the biggest test of my life. And oftentimes I would ask people, what do you think I saw? Well, bottom line, that was Daryl Sr., the dude that I'm named after. My father laying down in this awkward position, left arm is up, right arm is down. He's in his own puddle of blood. And I remember rolling him over, dropping to my knees, all kind of negative emotions, what I'm feeling right now, CL. I'm feeling abandoned, angry, frustrated, scared, hopeless. You name it, I'm probably feeling it. And, and as, I, on my, as I'm on my knees, I'm looking at my dad, I'm crying. I'm saying, daddy, please. 
Daddy, say something, please. His response? In a matter of moments, the pupils of his eyes, they dilate and the breathing stops. I'm 14 years old, a freshman in high school. And you talking about my world being rocked. In that moment, all I could think of is, man, you just took Superman from me and my brother. Like you took not just my provider, not just my protector, you took my best friend in that moment. He was more constant than anybody else in my life. And I'm like, man, I don't get him back. So I know exactly what I'm going to do because my environment has told me that it's gonna be a life for a life. Whatever you do to me, I gotta one up you. And so I knew I was about to take her life. This is how crazy God is though. When I had looked over my shoulder, I had to take a double take CL because what I had noticed, it blew my mind. I saw my little brother Quincy. And in that moment, that's when I discovered how important my favorite L word really is and that's leadership. I had, instead of me making a move that was going to benefit DJ only, I had to make a move that was beneficial for me and Quincy in that moment. Because just moments ago, I told him, Q, I got you when I tucked him behind me. I had to honor that word. And what I realized in life is, again, as we talked about before the show, when it boils down to it, leadership is something that people need. They, they need to tap into the leader that's in them. Why? Because you got people that's looking at you to make the right move for them. And so for me, that, that's where I began to discover leadership. And in that particular night, I didn't just figure a reason to, 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 to make a, the right move. I ended up finding my purpose that night, CL. And that's why I go around the country and I do what I do. Because I realize there's so many young people that are dealing with hardships, adversities, and they're like, man, why, why me? And they're ready to quit. They're, they're having, you know, these, uh, these, for lack of better words, these, these temper tantrums, these fits, if you will, because they're so, they're so upset and so pissed off at life being so difficult. And they can't seem to find answers for it. And so for me, my whole mission in life is to let them know, no, listen, it's not happening to you, young king, young queen. It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. And I know it doesn't feel like that in the moment, but it's happening for you. And if you can figure out a way not to quit, not to give up, to tap into that leader, I promise you, you're going to blaze a whole new trail for those that are coming behind you. And life is going to be better for them because of what you endured as a young leader. But yeah, that's, that's the reason why we do what we do. Well, uh, you got to connect uh, with, with, with Daryl. I'm in the studio just a slightly bit speechless. Go to DarylWThomas.com. And, and the reason why I am speechless is because I think this might be the second time I've heard I, I met when, when we talked earlier, part of this story, but more magnified tonight. <sighs> you know, I look at I look at a fourteen year old kid who was facing this 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 nexus. You know, but the, the the brother, his brother, and then his the loss of his dad. What does what does a 14 year old kid do in that moment? And, you know, Daryl, you, you've been given a, uh, you've been given a, a license to have a reason why life is bad for you. You know what I mean? You, you've been given a, 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 a blank check to have excuses for, hey man, Daryl just, we gotta understand what Daryl went through. But obviously, you, you, you know, God worked with you in the midst of all of that and said, I'm going to use this f for you. And I mean, going forward from that point, Daryl, I mean, how, how did you how did you navigate the rest of your life, you know, growing up as a, a kid and then high school, et cetera? You know, see, I appreciate you saying that. Um... For, for me, the way I navigated it, <clears throat> I had to go back to my identity. And where the identity was formed was back in seventh grade. 
And truth of the matter, when I started picking up books, and I started reading first, second grade, and I'm reading about Dr. King, I'm reading about Frederick Douglass, I'm reading about Jackie Robinson, like that began to plant seeds in me relating to my identity. I felt like, you know what, I, I, I can be a leader just like they are. You know, I can be impactful just like they can. Man, that's so inspiring. But fast forwarding to my seventh grade year, I came across a person that I had never met before. It was a substitute teacher. I went into the classroom because a lot of was on my chest dealing with life. You know, like I said, it was dysfunctional. And I, I had a lot on my chest that day. I wanted to talk to my favorite teacher, Coach Robbins. Well, Coach Robbins wasn't there. It was a substitute teacher. I remember walking to the back of the classroom. I sat down talking to my homeboy who sat in the back with me and, and just really catching up with him, man. What's going on? You good, bro? Like, uh, what you been doing this weekend? But the whole time I'm talking to him, I'm keeping my eyes on this lady, the substitute teacher. I see her get up from the teacher's desk and I see her walk over to the chalkboard and she writes out four words. I am a winner. In my mind, I'm like, man, I hope she don't make us write this because this is, I ain't never heard this, but this is corny, CL. Right. Like, I, I don't want to write this. You know, that's what I'm thinking. Right. But sure enough, she said, hey, good morning, class. We're like, hey, good morning, miss. She said, take out a fresh sheet of paper. I want you to write your name, today's date. In the top right-hand corner, I want you to write these four words on the board. I am a winner. And the only reason why I wrote it, because I didn't want to get in trouble with my daddy, right? Because my daddy, he, he can whoop. He can whoop. Yeah. But um, anyhow, I had wrote, I am a winner. And once I finished writing those words, she began to explain what it meant. She said, I'm a winner simply means no matter what you go through in life, no matter how crazy it is, no matter how unfair or undeserving it may be, she say, you do win as long as you don't quit. Quitters never win and winners never quit. Right. See, uh, I was slouching in the back of my chair trying to be cool like this. But by the time she had finished saying what she had said, I was sitting straight up at the very edge of my seat and I was eating up every single word that she had said. Why is that? Because in that moment, I walked into her classroom just like this and I was in need of answers. My life was going downhill. But when she had said what she said and I caught it, boom the whole entire trajectory of my life began to change. And so she had given me an answer to the test that I was facing in that moment. And so the very next day when I walked to that classroom, instead of being excited to see my favorite teacher, Coach Robbins, I'm now looking for the sub. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, hey, Coach, where, where Miss Lady at? And he was like, who are you talking about, the sub? I said, yeah, the sub, where's she? And I never saw her another day in my life, CL, but she had changed my life for the rest of my life. That day, I took out a fresh sheet of paper. I wrote my name, today's date, and those four words, I am a winner at the top of my paper. I did that all throughout my seventh grade year. My eighth grade year, I did that in all the other classes. And so by the time I get to ninth grade, which is the year that my dad had passed away, I started to embody this thing. Yeah, it went from my head to my heart. Now I see myself as being a winner, even though I'm still going through the crazy chaos stuff that I'm, that I'm going through at home. And so when I hit that situation with my dad, even though I didn't feel like I was ready for it, I was ready for it. Even though it was, man, it, it was so hellacious. Like I, I was still ready for it. Um, and so going forward beyond that point when I lost my dad, I had to keep leaning back on that identity that you are a winner. And if you can just figure out a way to just put one foot in front of the other. And, and my reason for putting one foot in front of the other was Quincy. Because everywhere I went, I told Quincy, I said, I got you, bro. You know what I mean? I had to make sure that, that okay, if I don't put a, a, a foot forward for nobody else, even for myself, I got to do it for my little brother Quincy because that was my word to him. And so that those two things what kept me. It was my identity and then my brother Quincy being right there. And so I'm, I'm so glad that, um, that I was being unselfish in those moments. Man, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, y'all hear that? This, I knew this was going to be, <laughs> I knew this was going to be uh, golden. But uh, our guest, Daryl, Coach D, Daryl W. Thomas, you can find him at Daryl, DarylWThomas.com. And a lot of people, I'll just say this, Daryl, because I know you want, you're, you're a, a humble guy. But a lot of people, sometimes when you tell your story, bro, a lot of people are just like, oh, okay, interesting. You know what I mean? Like, like 
like that kind of stuff just happens all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like I, oftentimes when I'm t- I'll be talking to a room full of educators or whatever, you know, hey, man, I lived on the streets for six months as an 11-year-old. It's just like, mm, man, tough break. But I can feel the, I can feel the, I can hear the sound of that woman writing on the chalkboard, brother. I, because of the experience and what you have experienced has cultivated your capacity to lead this next generation. Now, what I tell people is often, Daryl, man, you don't have to go through hell to keep people out of it, but man, there ain't nothing. There ain't nothing like your own story. There ain't nothing like it. And I really do believe, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are listening, all of my educator friends and superintendents, et cetera, this is the type of person that you need for your next event. So if you want to connect with him, all you got to do is go. I put this website in the chat, DarylWThomas.com. I'm flying solo tonight. I don't know where Greg is. I'm going to dock his pay tonight. He's probably out doing something. He usually handles that. But nonetheless, I can I could do it, baby. I set it up to where I could, I could juggle two things at one time, DarylWThomas.com. And so through through this life that you lived, did you have any other intersections that were defining moments that, that stand out to you? Oh yeah. Hands down. Um, like, like I told you, I had an opportunity to, to, to marry my high school sweetheart and, and see, uh, listen, I, I hang my hat on that because my, my daddy and mama couldn't say the same thing, you know? Um, and, and so for me, I see being a trailblazer, but, but I married my, my high school sweetheart and we will be celebrating 23 years come November you know, of 2023. And uh, for me, like that, that says something <clears throat> in terms of commitment, that says something in terms of honoring your word, that says something. And, and to, to, to cap it off, I remember when I got ready to ask for her hand in marriage, ask her father for her, uh, her hand in marriage. And um, he didn't really like me. He didn't like boys at all, really, being around his daughter. <laughs> all right. You know? But, you know, that's, that's a typical father. I understand, yeah. <laughs> he used to tell me stuff because I would walk her home after school. He used to tell me things like, hey, you better not come up in my yard. Don't don't even step one foot in my yard. You at, right there at the street by the curb, that's when that's where you stop. All right. <laughs> you know, I said, all right. I said, yes, sir, Mr. Fergus. You know, but... uh. But long story short, I worked at the nerve one day because at this point I'm telling her I love her and I really wanted to let her know how much I loved her. And so I was ready to ask for a hand in marriage. And so I, I stepped my I stepped a foot into the yard. You know, matter of fact, I went all the way up to the porch, knocked on the door, and um, I asked to speak to Mr. Ferguson. They let me into the house and I said, Mr. Ferguson, with all due respect, sir, I love your daughter. And if it's okay with you, I wanna I wanna marry her. And he looked at me like I had stupid on my face. <laughs> like, boy, are you either stupid or right. you just get crazy because I done told you. Right. And, um, and, and long story short, um, CL, what he told me, he pointed to a lady that sat in the corner in a wheelchair. And he said, are you sure you want to marry my daughter? He said, it's a good chance she can end up just like her as he pointed to the lady in the wheelchair. And I looked at that lady, looked at her eyes, and I could, as my eyes locked with her eyes, I was reassured that, man, if if she turns out to be half as beautiful beautiful of a soul as she is, listen, I'm, I'm down for that all day. Mm-hmm. And so I said, yes, sir, Mr. Mr. Ferguson. If she ends up like that, I ain't going nowhere. I'm right here. I'm going to love her. And um, that was her mom in that wheelchair. And her mom actually had a, a hereditary and curable disorder. And, and so not only did her mom have it, but a couple of her uncles had it as well. And that passed on to my wife and also to two of her brothers. And it's supposed to pass on to our kids. Out of those 22 years, almost 23 years of being married, my wife for the past 17 years has been dealing with this disorder. It has manifested. And so now she's wheelchair bound. And so... When, when you talk about another, you know, crossroad, another significant event in our life, it's when we begin to find that out. But again, this goes back to the, to the importance of you say what you mean and you mean what you say. If you said that, if you listen, 
I'm there. And matter of fact, the vows even say, you know, to death do us part, right? For 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 uh for sickness or or for for health, you know what I mean? So for me, what I'm thinking when when I when I experience these challenges, I'm like, okay, I signed up for this. This is what I signed up for. Does it feel good? No, it doesn't. But I keep reminding myself that it's not happening to you, DJ. It's happening for you, brother. It's happening for you. And if that didn't happen, CL, for my wife being in the situation she is, I don't know if I'll be able to serve at the level that I serve at. I don't know if I would have the patience that I have now. I don't know if I can be empathetic to people like I am now. You know what I mean? I definitely wouldn't be able to teach anybody that. And so, again, it's not happening to me, but it's happening for me. And for the record, although it's incurable, I truly believe that God is about to heal my wife. Her name is Alexia, Alexia Thomas, just for those that might want to know, right? If you if you want to pray for it, like all by all means, please do. But I'm like I really believe that's about to happen. And I, but 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 I'm encouraged nonetheless because for me, I feel like the Lord is not going to give us tests that we're not qualified for. You know, we're qualified to pass those tests. There's something in us that He wants to come out, and He knows that if we tap into that, we're gonna be all right. And so, no, I'm I'm I'm, I'm grateful for the life that God has given me. Um, I'm grateful, you know, for my beautiful wife, for our amazing children. I'm grateful. We ain't got grandbabies yet, but I'm grateful for them too, you know, when they come. I'm, I'm grateful for sure. Wow, wow, wow. Um, DarylWThomas.com. You know, I thought I was going to bring Daryl to North Carolina. He's going. We're talking about linking up and i'm like you know what? i can't share the stage with you bro i'm just going here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna intro you and carry your bags for you you know just when you just when you think just when you think you've 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 seen it all um god continues to god brought you into i brought you into my life for a reason i don't know about everybody else out here in this world and who listened to us and all that but this is you know, people say, man, you got such amazing guests. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? But I get I get the benefit of being ministered to, you know what I'm saying? And and so what a story, Daryl, of and this is how I guess this can translate to your amazing dynamic leadership presentations with young people in that you you live this thing, bro. Every day. And uh, I did not know that story about about i did not know that part of your story i didn't know that part of your life so i'm just hearing it with all of you for the first time on impacting life 24 7 and i thank you daryl for being such a an obedient man of god and servant to to be transparent and vulnerable for all these folks that will listen later on but you know you just talked about something relative to commitment you know we were talking about that in the pre-show, I told you, man, I've watched so many people start stuff and stop it just because it, it wasn't the magic number that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you're, you're speaking, especially to men, African-American men in particular. Hey, man, when you get in this thing, it, it's not just to dip your toe in the, in the water to see how well it works, right? Right. I, I mean, you, you can speak on marriage all day long, can't you? Yes, sir. That's Absolutely. powerful, man. That's powerful. So... Man, if I if I don't get my emotions together, y'all y'all know I'm the emotional one in this in on this in this team here. So I got to get myself together. But I'm gonna I am going to you know Daryl, we started a, a jail campaign. I don't know if you know that or not, but every month I go speak in the jail, the county jail, which is an hour from me. It's not even in my county. Hmm. But I said, man, I want to just do more. I was just I I don't want to just be this corporate guy. I want to I want to just do more. So I said, I went and met with the sheriff. I said, can I just come and be the motivational speaker for your jail? Man, we've been going there for a year straight, haven't missed one time. And now we're getting ready to go into the second county. And I, yeah. I've declared to our team that I want to go to every single county in this, in this, in this state. And I'm going to, if you, with your permission, then my next month's thing, I would love for us to be able to start the meeting out with what you wrote on your paper. And I'm going to have the men and women write that on their paper uh, when I go back to the jail next month. If With your permission, if you would allow that. Please do. Please do. Because what, what's, what's the statement say? What did you write on the top of your paper? I am a winner. 
Four words that changed, that prepared, yeah. you know what I mean? Four words that have propelled you into an international speaker. And so if you'd like to connect, I'm telling you, you got you to gotta bring your tissues when you talk to Daryl. But when you, if you'd like to connect, go to <laughs> Daryl wthomas.com you can find his website and all of his connections there so you've written some you've written some works tell us about the four books that you've written give us kind of a snapshot of each one of them yeah so so the first book i had wrote it was really um after sharing my story i spent time in the classroom uh teaching um i taught character education uh, for alternative uh, program um and and as i'm sharing the story i saw the kids kind of move to the edge of their seats and they're like eating up the words I'm saying. And I said, man, if we're having this type of impact and these kids are really like beginning to have dialogue, they want to know more, they're asking questions. Um, they're sharing their personal stories, you know, which they otherwise wouldn't share. They would keep it to themselves. I said, if it's having this kind of impact, now I want to put in the book. And so during that particular time, um, we were going through uh, one of the curriculums I had developed and we were setting SMART goals. And so I'm, I'm, I'm that type of leader that um, I want to lead by example. And so I asked them to set a goal that's going to stretch. Me. And I said, I'm, I'm going to set a goal that's going to stretch me. Mm -hmm. And my goal is to write a book. And this will be my first book. You know, I'm going to publish it by this date. And so I did that. It's, it's called uh, Today I Win Seven Answers to Passing a Test. And then we turned around, wrote another book uh, called Today I Win When Tests Go Beyond the Classroom. Um, and that book really speaks to uh, a lot of our young people that are quote unquote distracted or being a distraction. Um, people are labeling them as having learning disabilities mm -hmm. when it's not necessarily learning disabilities. They're just distracted by life's tests that they're facing they, that have nothing to do with academics. They go back to a home life and it's chaotic. They're, they're trying to figure out where my next meal is coming from. I got to go work this job, you know, so I can help my mom, you know, to pay the bills. You know, I have to watch the kids while my parents go work, you know, so on and so forth. And so <clears throat> they're distracted because of those things. And we can begin to teach them that you really do win as long as you don't quit. And we can show them how to win in the midst of those adversities and hardships. Now we can start to see them be successful, not just in their personal lives, but that, that began to translate over into their academic lives as well. And so that's where that book came from. Today I win. Um, when tests go beyond the classroom, it, Amazon bestseller is actually on Amazon and my website. If you guys want to check it out, now you'll get a signed copy if they go to the website, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's what I do, brother. I'll be I'll be working them signed copies now, bro. Yes, go to Daryl DarylWThomas.com or on Amazon. But if you want your signed copy, you got to go to his website. All right. What's the next one? Uh, the next book is called When the Walls Speak, uh, Restoring the Generational Confidence. Uh, fathers Restoring Generational Confidence is what it is. Uh, for me, I, I felt, and, and you can attest to this, CL, it's something about when a father speaks, the kids listen a different way, you know? They do. And, um, and, and so the concept of the book is to get these fathers together and to begin to share some impactful wisdom, knowledge, information for our young kids that we're going to help them restore that confidence that seems to be going down. Um, <clears throat> and, and so that's, that's what the book is about. We brought in 12 dads, including myself, you know, where we began to just drop wisdom that we believe was going to be helpful for our, for our kiddos. And so uh, that again, that's When the Wall Speaks, Fathers Restoring Generational Confidence is the name of that book. Roger that. Third, um, well, I already talked about third. The okay. that was the third book, and so the the My fourth. Bad. No, no, it's okay. The, the The fourth book is actually called the Winning Mindset. This is more of a collaboration where I had other phenomenal authors um, in the book with me, and um, and they're just sharing anything to do with entrepreneurship, uh, leadership, um, overcoming adversities. It's just a, uh, it's, it's it's a whole. Uh, just collaboration of, of books or, or stories in this particular book. Let me see if I can give this to you real quick. So this will be the winning mindset right here. Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> winning mindset. And you're a contributor to that one, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. This is, th this is again, uh, can they get that from your website or just on Amazon? That, that'll be on Amazon. Okay. Get that from Amazon, the winning mindset. 
Yep. Uh, so let's just review real quick. The first one was today I win today seven I win. answers to passing the test. Today I win seven answers to passing the test. The next one was today I win when tests go beyond the classroom. Yes. Today I win when tests go beyond the classroom. The next one when the walls speak. Fathers restoring generational confidence. Yes. And then the last is the winning mindset. The winning mindset. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, you know, Daryl, I guess one of the things that brings us, obviously, you know, the thing that brings me and you close together is the, uh, you know, well, I went to Paris Island. Where did you go? Where You went to San Diego, didn't you? Went to San Diego. Yes. See, yeah. We're, we won't hold that against you. <laughs> we won't hold that against you, but me and Daryl are both uh, former Marines, he, and and I would just like I know the show is supposed to go thirty minutes. You got a few more minutes, man. I, we done went over anyway, so just give me a few more minutes. I, I want to hear about your time in the Marine Corps, and and how that transitioned into that type of environment. Um, were you prepared for it? You know, based off of the things you went through in your childhood, that how did you experience? How did how was your experience? You know, coming up through the Marine Corps. Yeah, I felt like I was prepared for it, CL. Um, you know, m- matter of fact, the reason why I went into the Marine Corps is because my my wife, which is my girlfriend at the time, when we were in high school, she was expecting our first child. And so my senior year, I knew I couldn't just go straight to college. I decided to go to the military. And I asked people, I said, hey, which one is the toughest? Which one is the hardest? They said the Marine Corps. I said, that's the one I want to do. You know, so the reason why I say I felt like I was ready for it is because challenges, that, that's been something I've, I've welcomed. You know, I, I, I tend to thrive when it comes to challenges. And so I felt like I was I was ready for it for sure because of that mindset. Uh, but something my recruiter told me going in, and I think this is for anyone that's listening, like, please do mm-hmm. uh, take, take, take heed to this. <clears throat> he had gave me some advice. He said, listen, when you go into the Marine Corps, it's going to be the most physically challenging thing you've ever done in your life. Mm -hmm. He said, but understand this, it's more mental than it is physical. And as I started to go through boot camp, I realized exactly what he meant Mm -hmm. because it was physically demanding. Um, But when I started to understand the mental game, I said, okay. Yeah. I said, I got this. Yeah. And that, that, that's when the whole demeanor began to change going through our boot camp and that, that led to uh to several different you know promotions you know in the Marine Corps, but I spent five years in the Marine Corps. Got out as a staff sergeant, um, went in, uh, went went to Kuwait in 03, went to Iraq in 04. Um, I was a radar technician, uh, but yeah, so so I really enjoyed my time in the Marine Corps. But the biggest thing I got from the Marine Corps were the importance of core values. Yeah. And so my, my core values are love, leadership, and legacy. You know, that's that's really what what I focus on, love, leadership and legacy. And so, yeah, it, it, it was an amazing time in the Marine Corps. Well, I love it. And uh, Semper Fi, the brother's amazing and uh, still in pretty good shape after being out for so long. So uh, you want to book Daryl, just go to DarylLThomas.com. You can find w. out. You, huh, Daryl, I'm sorry. Let me get it right. DarylWThomas.com. I was looking at it all on the screen there. My eyes are still watering, so I got to get it. <laughs> Right here, Daryl L. Daryl W. Thomas. dot com. And one thing I want to tell you is that he he's got this statement that I really love. He says there is no win without the L. Tell us about the L, bro. Tell us what the L is. Come on, L. Let's hear it. <laughs> no, no. So, so as I keep alluding to love, leadership, and legacy, like if you really want to win, we're talking about life. Period. Right. E- even on the job, in your careers, in your family. Um, if you want to win, love, leadership, and legacy is, is what it's all about. And so for me, what I've learned is I can't lead well if I don't first love myself, right? So I have to start with love. Love, leadership, I can't leave a legacy if I don't lead well. And so um, so again, it's love, leadership, and legacy. You, it's no winning without taking the L. You got to take the L. That's what I'm talking about, man. I, and when I saw when I saw that as I was reviewing for this week, I said, "Man, that that is so dope. I I love it." And uh, some of the topics that that he talks uh, talks on is clear self identity, positive mental health, enhanced self confidence. This is what people will walk away with. And uh, Daryl has been featured on 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 many different, like I said, major 
major platforms, some of the testimonials that I see from Daryl. Uh, Coach D is one, one, one lady says this. This is Dr. Jeannie Johnson. This is the assistant superintendent of Midway Independent School District. Here's what she says. She says, our staff was touched to hear Daryl's inspiring story of his private life growing up and the difficulties that he had over, to overcome in, in his childhood and continuing through adulthood. His perseverance, courage, and winning attitude was communicated with a passionate, honest speaking style that resonated and connected with everyone. Uh, he engaged the attendees with, in, with the crowd participation, energy, and humor, smiles, laughs, cheers, and tears from the audience culminated with a standing ovation in response to an emotionally compelling presentation. And that's just one of his uh, many, many, many uh, presentations that he makes throughout the country. So I tagged some people. I don't usually do that much in the podcast, but I did for a reason. Uh, Dr. Daryl Minus and uh, Dr. Eric Minus, both educational leaders. There's one in Washington and another in Virginia. I know that they could both benefit from your services. And remember what we were talking about in the pre-show? We just might as well just start doing it now, bro. And so, Daryl, Eric, if you guys like to contact my good friend Daryl here, DarylWThomas.com, and uh, when you reach out to him, uh, just Daryl, just send me twenty percent of the check, and we're good. All right, so, uh, so <laughs> yes, sir. That's that fast talk that you get at the, get at the commercial, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. But you also talked about fatherhood, and I tagged Donnell Bryant, who has a whole fatherhood podcast, and I just believe that fatherhood is important. And oh. Jamar Washington deals with entrepreneurship and um, this brother is a trailblazer out there in las vegas i've been on his show i, I think you would be an asset and y'all to connect and that's really what our our next phase in impacting life 24 7 is man we want to plug people in where yeah. this becomes exponential it's yeah. not just onesie twosies but man when when you listen to the story of somebody like uh, Daryl W. Thomas, you, you got to say, man, this needs to be heard all across the country and around the world in every hamlet. And anything that I can do to propel that is is what I'm going to do. So I know that that your brother, you talked about him and he wasn't a, he you know, that that story in and of itself was amazing. But there was a he transitioned right in and in, in there's a, there's a part of that story that that if you don't mind, if because you shared it with me in the pre-show, is that too private to share it or, or is that okay? I think we should save it for the next one. Okay, let's do it. We'll bring him back and we'll we'll tell we'll tell you we'll, you'll hear the rest of the story and the best of the story. Yeah, and what I'm gonna do is you already got the link, Daryl. So let's just wait maybe a month or two and then just link back up and schedule yourself, brother. If it's open, schedule it, okay? <laughs> Uh, and then if I mess up and forget to mark that off the calendar, we'll fix it. <laughs> you, you know how it is. But again, Daryl W. Thomas is a phenomenal speaker, a captivating leader, someone who is investing in the next generation. I'm going to ask you one last question. Now I'm going to I'm going to let you bounce because I know. You're an hour behind me, and I got to go eat, bro. I didn't even eat. I came, I came, got in the studio, got my hair done, and I said, I got to be ready for the Dr. Daryl, Coach D. <laughs> what is, when, when, when young people are with you, what is it that they take away from you, a time with Coach D? Because that's kind of important. I know we've, I've given the 50,000 foot level, but what do you hope that young people leave with when they're with you? I hope they they walk away feeling inspired and empowered. And, 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 and my demeanor intentionally is to be approachable, is to be relatable. Like, I don't want you seeing me as being, you know, this person that can't be touched, right? I, I want you to touch me. I want you to dap me up. I want you to, you know, pull me to the side. Hey, can I talk to you? I want that. And so... Um, so for me, it starts with the connection, but the, the end goal is hopefully you have looked at me and you've been close enough to where you can get a real look at me and be inspired and then be empowered to go out there and lead a life that's worth saluting. Like that's, that's really my hopes desire. 
Man, you I know. tell you, I, and you know that ice thing. I said, man, I wish I had came up with that. I'm gonna see if I could just. I'm. A, I'm a, I, I got like maybe I'll just call it icing so that I can avoid copyright infringement. <laughs> I said, that, is so, that is so powerful. The ice. Can you share that real quick? Well, what the ice is? You you gave that to some educators. You said I was looking at his real. I said he said you have gotta ice these students. What is it, Daryl? Tell us, bro. <laughs> So the I, the I is to inspire, you know, just really just what it is, you know, you want to inspire them. It's not just with words, it's with who you are, it's with your being that you inspire them, you know, then the C is to challenge them. You know, you challenge them like a lot of times, I don't know where where we done got off, man, you we feel like we can't talk to the kids the way they need to be talked to, right? In a, in a, in a way where we're holding them accountable. Like it, they, they need that and they want it, truth be told, they want to be challenged to that, to, to that degree. And then the last part is the E, which is to empower. You know, it's not enough to inspire them, it's not enough to challenge them, but now can you give them the space can you give them the 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 uh, the go ahead to to go out there and do you know what I mean to empower them? And I think that's so important for us to do. But yeah, ice is inspire, challenge, and empower. Yeah, and you know maybe we'll just do an ice conference, brother. Ice, ice, baby. Yeah, we we go. I'm telling you what, y'all need to y'all need to start saving your funds now. Because when Daryl comes to the East Coast or I get to the West Coast, I usually come to Texas every year, but it's too hot out there, brother. You got to come where it's cooler. I, I, <laughs> uh, man, we, I would love for, I, mean, I could just imagine, I, I'm visioning it right now, both of us, like like E.T. and Jeremy, man, on the stage together. What what a dynamic presentation that would be, bro. Um, so we need, we're going to brainstorm that for real. I mean, all kidding aside, because... Um, you know, they say don't hide your light under a bushel. Let that light shine. And I, I have come to the conclusion, Daryl, and you know this well as I do. We can speak to a room of a thousand kids or a thousand students or a thousand people, and maybe only one get it. Maybe only one, right? And we in our mind are saying it was all worth it if it's right. just that one. Right. And you know. I know you're that type of man, but I know there are thousands that have been impacted by you. So, ladies and gentlemen, y'all hear their music. And uh, me, I got to let the the doctor go. I got to let Coach D go, but he's promised to come back. Now, look, if you wait another seven months to come back, I'm going to fire you, bro. It ain't going to work, okay? (laughs) Now, I got out of that long. It's not going to be that long. I told him, I told him, I said I was going to pull rank. But I just found out, Lord, he outranked me, so I can't even pull rank on the brother. I'm just older than him. That, we'll use that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Coach D, you are phenomenal. You are a blessing to America and this globe. And I I pray that, number one, I pray, I'm going to pray for you and your family and your wife every day. Please tell us her name again. I'm going to write her name down. Alexia. Alexia. We're going to pray for her. All I want all my faith partners out there to put Alexia on your prayer uh, chain and we're going to pray for her throughout the country that God would touch her body and uh, continue to strengthen Daryl as he's out here a lot of people think it's glamorous but it's a lot of work to be out here traveling and 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 impacting and pouring into other people and so I just want to I want God to bless you all I want God to heal Alexia and continue to give you expand your borders brother so before we let you go I want you to take the next I'm gonna give you 45 seconds because I know you like to talk uh take 45 seconds and speak a word to those people that are listening that have gone through something Daryl and they feel like there's no hope but they came and passed by here and they're like wow I, I, maybe there is hope Daryl the, the floor is yours yeah as I said before guys your, your story <clears throat> your story the things we we go through the things we experience are not happening to you they're happening for you and truth of the matter your story isn't just for you your story is for the people that are reading it. And then you know, we got some people that are, that are reading your life right now and they're seeing how you go through things. And so I'm speaking to the leader in you right now. Whatever you do, listen to me, whatever you do, do not quit. Because if you stop in the middle of your story, now you leave those people hanging, you leave them hopeless, right? Not knowing what they ought to do. 
So, so again, I'm, I'm going to say it just like this. And this is probably my favorite quote, CL. It says, a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. But you can't light another candle if you choose to quit in the midst of your problems, in the midst of your tests, in the midst of your storms. You have to figure out that reason to keep on moving and to make it past. Because you got people to influence. You got candles to light. So on that note, it's been an honor, CL. Like, I really appreciated my time with you, brother. I really enjoyed this. Looking forward to the next one. To all those that listen in, hey, listen, go light candles. <laughs> go light your candles, that's for sure. DarylWThomas.com. Go there and connect with this brother. Have him to your city today. I mean, I'm a professional speaker, and I'd have him come to my city and speak. I'd go listen to him. <laughs> um, and and just the voice that you that God has given you, brother, I know it's going to be in every hamlet, in every county, in every city. Um, that's going to be a household name, Coach D, and I'm going to help make that happen. So thank you so much, Coach, and uh, we'll be in touch real soon. Let's just stay connected and uh, message me day or night. Anything you need, brother, we're here for you. Okay, man? I appreciate you. All right, take care, brother. All right, that was Daryl Thomas. His story is unbelievable. When I tell you the brother's story is just... I mean, how am I crying on my own show? Well, that's because we just let God move however he wants to move. (laughs) And he has an absolute amazing... Not just story, but he, he has, a, has an amazing life, man. And uh, I just wanted to connect him with some some great people. And just when you think, just when you think you've heard it all, you know, I sometimes read my book and think, man, it couldn't get no worse than that. Just listen to it. that young man, fourteen years old, watch his dad pass away right in front of him, man. But every excuse to fail. And he has found every excuse to win. I am a winner. We're going to tell that to our folks at our next jail campaign. They're going to write it on a piece of paper. I am a winner. Winner, winner. Winner, winner. Go light your world. Yep, that's exactly right. So this coming Thursday, we are off until Thursday, ladies and gentlemen, unless the hurricane comes. If the hurricane comes, then I might not have power. But we are looking forward to our next guest this coming Thursday, Tara Lachey Blue, all the way from the Central Standard Time of Arkansas. She's got an amazing, 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 amazing story and a really cool accent. She is a dynamic fireball who who is impacting people around the world. It's about 70,000 followers And she just, she believes in faith, family, holiness, but she also believes in fun. She lives life out loud. And sometimes that can make people uncomfortable, but you got, look, you don't know what they've been through. That's why sometimes when I go speak somewhere and they're like, why is King so loud? I say, you don't know what I went through to get this voice. I'm going to use it every time I can. And when you see somebody like our next guest coming up on Thursday, you'll see why. So tune in Thursday at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we will have our guest with us, Tara Lachey Blue. Until next time, go check out my good friend, Daryl. He is a truly one-of-a-kind gem. God bless you. We'll talk to you Thursday.